Hi church, my name is Brittany Klausner and I am so excited that I have the privilege to talk about hope in this Advent season with you. Hope is something I am very passionate about, so I'm really excited that we get to dive on in together about what biblical hope looks like. Now I know maybe for some of you, hope is hard. And I think that's because we look at it from this worldly perspective instead of having a biblical worldview on what hope is. When you hear the word hope, it might be easy to think of the worldly kind of hope like this optimism or choosing to see how a situation maybe might sort of kind of work out, um, hoping it works out for the best. It's kind of like saying, well, gosh, I hope it works, or I hope we have a good time, or I hope it all comes together. It's kind of this like flippant and fleeting sort of hope. But biblical hope is much richer and it is assured because biblical hope is a who and not a what. Biblical hope is based on Jesus, not based on our circumstances. Biblical hope is about waiting, anticipation, and expectation that the Lord is going to do something, that he will help us in our time of need and continue being a savior the way that he always has been for us. And so there are two different Hebrew words that the Bible uses to explain hope. The first one is yahal, and it just means to wait for. Immediately, I think of Noah in the ark with all of those animals. There is a certain kind of a hope on God that you're waiting for those waters to recede so you can get out of that stinky ark. I just, I can't keep, you know, I can't let that one go. I just think of Noah in the ark every time. The second Hebrew word for hope used is kava, and it also means to wait, but it's related to the word kav, which means cord. And if you think about pulling a cord, like a bungee cord, for example, there's this tension to it while you pull. Um, there's a tension while you're waiting for something to happen. This is kava kind of hope. Because again, hope is about waiting, anticipation, and expectation. And Jesus is our hope. These two words for hope, yahal and kava, are used over 40 times alone in the Psalms, the writers just continually waiting on God. In Genesis 12, we see God give Abram a promise that Abram would be made into a great nation. Genesis 15, God makes a covenant with Abram that his offspring would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Abraham and Sarah were barren, and they waited with the anticipation and expectation on God for 25 years before they saw God's promise of a son fulfilled. I'm willing to guess that Sarah and Abraham experienced that kava kind of hope, that tension, that pulling, the stretching of their faith through the years of anticipation and expectation that God was going to come through in the way that he said he would come through. In Genesis 39, we see Joseph, he waits in prison while he is hoping to be remembered and delivered. Joseph sits in prison and he waits with purpose. Numbers 13, we see Caleb and Joshua, they're scouting out the promised land and they come back to the wilderness and they are just full of this biblical hope, this expectation and anticipation that they will be delivered to the promised land as God said. The entire book of Job. Job's story breaks my heart, but you can see the way that he hopes in God through his intense suffering, losing everything, his family, his livelihood. He's got tension with God. He's got tension with his friends. Um, I just, I can't imagine that type of deep hope. And yet Job is such a beautiful picture of biblical hope. In 1 Samuel 16, we see that David as a teenager is appointed anointed king. It takes 10 years actually for him to be appointed as king. So he waits over a decade waiting on God's timing for his anointing to become an appointing. Daniel 9, we see the way that Daniel waits on God for a breakthrough in prayer. And I see this in a lot of you and myself and my family in the ways that we just consistently steadfast, we are faithful to prayer begging God to come through in the ways that we hope he will come through. In Luke chapter 1, we see Gabriel, the angel, visit Mary. And Luke 1.30 says, Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, 
and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and we will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Imagine the hope. Imagine the anticipation, the expectation, this waiting that Mary had the moment that she heard this good news from Gabriel. Imagine her months-long hope and anticipation as she is pregnant and awaiting the birth of the Savior of the world. Every time Jesus moved in her womb, it was a reminder of what's to come. So Jesus didn't show up on the scene the way that he was expected to. He rarely does, right? Jesus, um, as the Messiah, he was expected to show up as uh, someone who would overthrow the government, someone who would be a military presence, to come in with force that way. And yet our Messiah, our Jesus, showed up humbly as a baby in a manger, growing up in the temple, only doing what he saw the Father doing, waiting on God's timing for his ministry to begin. I bet even Jesus, who is our hope, was filled with anticipation and expectation. It's actually, it's in my experience that God still operates in this way. There are times where I expect Jesus to show up in a certain way, and yet he comes in and he does it so much better every single time. The amount of hope and trust that I put in Jesus, especially when I don't see a way out or I don't see a way things could come together. And then he comes through and he just makes sense of it all. That hindsight helps us see the way that he was working behind the scenes for his glory and purpose. God is faithful and he is worthy of our biblical hope. God has provided and got me through my darkest days. And he has built a testimony of his faithfulness, not because of me, not because of what I've done, but because of who he is, because his nature and his character. The evidence of God in my life, in your life, in our church, in those around us, um, the evidence just builds our faith. It stirs our hope for other people around us, maybe that don't know Jesus as their Messiah. We can choose to remain hopeful in God and his promises and in who he is because God never changes. He is steadfast and he is faithful. Biblical hope is waiting with anticipation and expectation. It's looking forward by looking backward, trusting in God's character, not the world or our circumstances. Biblical hope isn't optimism on the odds. It's a choice to wait on God. It's not a dead and hopeless sort of faith. The Greek word LPs means living hope. And it is used in 1 Peter 1.3 that says, Because of his great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. We are in great company living with hope. We see men and women all over the Bible waiting on God. There was hope all throughout the Old Testament. Hope the day that Jesus was born. Hope the day that he died on a cross so that we might be in right relationship with God. Hope the day that Jesus was resurrected. Can you imagine the hope the day that he was resurrected? Hope all over the New Testament and in Revelation showing Jesus' second coming and eternity with God for those who have repented and believed that Jesus is Lord and that he died for their sins. There is hope every day because of who God is and what he will do because he is faithful and he is steadfast. There is hope for his presence for his provision, and for his love. Hope isn't just for tomorrow. Hope is a who, and that hope is with you right now. You might be asking yourself, what does this look like for me? What can I hope for this Advent season? And I'm going to give you a freebie because you can hope for the presence of Jesus in your life, asking for him to be near, asking for forgiveness of your sins and repenting, 
and waiting for expectation of his promise. Because remember, biblical hope is waiting on God with expectation in anticipating that God is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. And my prayer for you today is that you would stir your biblical hope and trust that Jesus is near. May the Lord bless you today.